to rush traffic, so first question. Uh, question. Um, you have a map of the United States and so the America, it's the map. Yes. The map of Chinese name. Can you read that one down and then name the people there? Uh, let's see. So many slides. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the, the one's very simple. Hassan Bay is already not named as Hassan Bay, okay? His name is Li Bai Si Bu. Right? That's one. I, I don't even have to look at this. And the other one is, is the. Uh, not many. <laughs> Uh, I actually didn't, didn't put this down. This, this is McKinney, uh, McKinsey River. It is not McKinsey River on, on this. It's still beautiful. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, where, uh, here. Uh, this is. So it, it's still named today? It's no. Name today. It is not the name today because remember McKinsey. Yeah. Came to that place and named this name after McKinsey. It's no more than name, like just like one of Bassi Richardson. A very good example, by so. Um, I know that there is a book about the Bassi Richardson that was Of, of coming to America. You know, 
But the sticks and pieces added in, uh, obviously, uh, is not a whole map. If it's a whole map, he wouldn't uh, be calling the right. Caribbean islands Indies, right? He thought he was coming to India. So that's one proof that he, is, he has no knowledge where he's going to, or where he arrived at. Well, it's possible that he might not have been entirely truthful. But That's true, really but we cannot guess. Yeah. And as a scientist, I can, I cannot guess anything. I can speculate in a bit, but I have to have some foundation to speculate. That is beyond my speculation. I yes. believe that uh, the British author Gavin Menzies uh, covers much of that question in his book, uh, 1434. Uh, he speculates that much of the Italian Renaissance was based on uh, Chinese knowledge. That was uh, uh, okay. I I cannot say hundred percent is correct, mm -hmm. but I also had some observation that I actually personal personally I saw. This is in a hotel in in Italy, uh, right by the lakes. You know, the, across the lake is it's uh, Switzerland. There is a hotel there, and right above that elevator, there's a picture. It has a little boat. The Italians told me, this is our boat, very typical of that area. But the boat is actually in China since Han Dynasty. That's the kind of boat that China had and still have right now. Um, the Chinese call it Wupeng Huan. Uh, anybody from the Jiangsu area? No. Zhejiang, Jiangsu, or you should know what Wu Peng Tuan means. Okay, if you go to all some of these, uh, well, there are some Chinese uh, bandits too. They have uh, waterways and sort of uh, uh, roads, and people just go around and, and go places on boats. Those boats are Wu Peng Tuan. It is exactly the same boat on the Swiss lake, or Italian lake, that we uh, call it. <clears throat> Actually, we had a cruise on the, on the lake, and I saw one of them, but it's too far for me to take a good picture. I only saw it. It is like the Chinese boat, Wu Kong Tong. And of course, the Italians say it is theirs, but it, it cannot be so coincidental. So there's some, something that Italians are. Another thing is spaghetti. I mean, a lot of people argue about that. I'm very sure the spaghetti came from China. Um, because spaghetti recently is found in Hong Kong. There's a bowl flipped upside down. People uh, excavate the tomb and just turn it, turn it up. There it is. Spaghetti, Chinese noodle, which is Italians call spaghetti. And I still yet to see spaghetti before the Renaissance era. If there's something before Renaissance that we can find, like spaghetti, then it's an independent uh, invention. Otherwise, it has to come from China. Right? Well, these are just bits and pieces of interesting thing. Yes? To help answer your question, a few years ago, Gavin meant we had a chance to speak to him. I do too. Uh, I did too. You spoke to him. Did he tell you? Yes. I actually went to his house. Yes, yes. Okay, sure. The, uh, did he tell you that there was a 1424 uh, map on the ceiling in a place in the Doge's well, that, that's, that's how he started his research. That's how he started his research. But uh, I haven't really read through his 1434 book. I hate to put down any specific date, specific year on the exchange of different people, because it might have been a long history of communication between Italians and Chinese. Because we know there are Italian tombs in China, in Yangzhou, in the stated uh, 
uh, 13th century, I believe. They're still there. So people have been traveling back and forth. Now, the interesting thing that since you brought up this, I don't know how many of you have seen this recent news that uh, London has dug up some Roman era Chinese in the central uh, city area. Chinese skeleton data in the Roman era, right? This is the first time we learn about uh, Chinese people coming to Britain. I don't know what, what we call it at the time. Britain, UK, of course not UK, but Britain or England, England, we don't know. But people were settled in when England was, uh, London was just a little piece of land across the river. And I think this is right around King Cross area. So there's a lot of things we don't know about history. That's been buried really literally underground. We haven't dug up. We don't know what the story is until we see them. All right? So to make any conclusion about, oh no, gentle that never across south of Africa or of the heat, they have to stop in East Africa and so on. This is ridiculous because now we have so many things that's already con confirmed that they not only cross south of Africa, they already been to America, they've been to Australia, and which is another talk <laughs> that I haven't time to, to cover. Um, <clears throat> science history, uh, the study of history with science is a very new thing, especially in the internet era that we are really benefited by the kind of information we can get from the e-books, from old Google books, from maps, ancient maps, from literature that are digitized on the internet and so on. And because I can read ancient Chinese as well as, as middle English, really middle meaning middle age English, and French, Spanish and so on, I, I can actually, I, I can read a little bit of it. You know, not, not the entire passage, but the keywords I can do, do it. So by having all these tools in, in hand, I could actually do a lot more, or we can do a lot more on historical research uh, beyond what other people could do. Maybe 20, 20 years ago, just go into the library and browse everything, don't know what to look for, and just accidentally bump into something, and then you can write a paper on it. That era is gone. Now I can sit in my armchair, put a few keys, strokes, and using keywords, um, turn the game on. All the pictures of turning it on, videos, everything come, come to my attention. And I can look at it, turn them around, do all kinds of things with them. I can look at how the Yellow River changed the course over 800 years. And I can do that. Now you go to the library before 20 years ago, there's no way you can find any information as fast as, as, fast as I can do. I, I can say that one hour of my time, I could do things that people could do, or could only do, in 10 years time, right? So this is the benefit of our time. You, you can use your, the tools uh, to your advantage. Histor historical research is really something very, very interesting. You can dig up something that nobody could ever dream of. And you can make your name out of it. And I'm not sure I could, but I hope I could. But anyway, this is my interest, and I will continue my work until the day. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can I please with that question? I want to thank you for your time. And so many people